Uh, David, I, like you, uh, want to know reality, what's the nature of existence, and the way I like to come at it is to try to get down to the most fundamental categories of things that people think exist without any limitations mm -hmm. whatsoever. So if I come to you and say, what are the most fundamental categories from which other things may be derived exist, how many would you give me and what would it look like? I have absolutely no idea. And the reason I say that is because... But to me that's interesting. Yeah, sure. That, so, you, have no, that yeah. you have no idea. Here's why because I, I have an idea, maybe you're all wrong. <laughs> okay. Here's why I say that. If I want to know what exists at some level of reality, what I'll do is I'll look at our best scientific theories at that level of reality. I don't think we've got any good guide to what exists that trumps our science. So then the question as to what okay. exists at the most fundamental level of reality is something I'd better answer by looking at our theory of the most fundamental level of reality. And the problem is we don't have that theory. And the, one of the lessons we seem to have learned from the development of mm science in general and physics in particular is that when we go from a theory at one level to a theory at a lower level we're caught really by surprise it has things in it that we didn't expect and it takes out things that we kind of expected to stay there <laughs> so maybe back in the day we thought you know, life and mind were fundamental in the world and they've dropped out entirely by the time you get down to cell biology uh, molecular biology um, and then maybe we thought um, persisting objects and solid matter was a fundamental part of the world. That <laughs> drops out by the time you get down to atomic physics. So I think the, the goal of looking for mm. what's fundamental, even though you know, many people in, in physics and philosophy care deeply about it, the, the goal of looking for what's mm. fundamental I think is premature. We maybe, maybe we were optimistic, we're starting to get an inkling as to what fundamental theories would look like, but lots of people have thought that before and, and they've been wrong. I, I've heard some people say that there's, there, there could be an infinite regress of, of, of theories all the way down. Um, is, that doesn't make sense to me. Does that make sense to you? It doesn't really make sense to me. Having said which, I don't really trust what makes sense to me in these contexts. <laughs> I think we've got good reason to expect that's probably not how things are. Partly scepticism about whether it makes sense, partly the fact that our physics seems to be converging. Lots of disparate theories describing different phenomena start falling under the ambit of fewer yeah. theories that describe the whole phenomena. history of physics. Exactly, yeah. Recent, yeah. So I think we've got reason to think that physics converges down to one description that we stop at, but we don't know that yet. And, and we know not so much about what that description looks like. We've got an inkling, but perhaps not much more. Would that have inkling. to be very simple, or could it have a lot of complexity? Because some people think quantum mechanics is the, is the, is the fundamental category, and uh, quantum mechanics is very complicated. Complexity is a little bit in the eye of the beholder. As a physicist, I think physics is pretty simple, and biochemistry is amazingly complicated. <laughs> I don't know how they can do all that stuff. There's so many different bits of it. Yeah. Physics is really abstract, and the mathematics of its descriptions take a lot of effort to bend your mind around. But in many respects, physical theories are pretty simple. You can almost literally write them on T-shirts. You really struggle to write our best theory of multicellular life on a T-shirt. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, I mean, it can't get too simple. The, the world we live in is complicated, and the theory has to have enough complexity to allow that emerging complexity of our world to turn up, but we've learned a lot about how really simple theories can generate really complex outputs, really simple computer programs can produce sure, incredible sure, patterns. Sure. So it, it, it could be pretty simple, I think. So if we're trying to get our hands around what exists mm. in the most general sense of the term, you've given me a thorough understanding of what exists or what could exist from a scientific point of view accessible to science. Mm. And the question is, is that all that exists? And so I'll give you some other categories sure. and see how you like. I mean, there are abstract objects, uh, um, universals, Good. mathematics, logic, propositions, a whole set of things, platonic, and if you believe in that. Uh, there are things that are non-physical that people claim, cosmic consciousness, uh, spirit regions, God, I mean, yeah. other categories. I mean, so. I, if I'm trying to say I want to get everything yep. in mind, I, I may say some are empty sets, null sets. Sure. I mean, here's a set with nothing in it. Yeah. Okay, that's fair, but I just want to get my arms around everything. Yeah. Okay, I see your point. Okay, so take those two categories. I think, I'm, I don't think there's a, a platonic realm of mathematical objects, and that's been paradoxical for a long time. I think, I think mathematics is a science of structure, and how we understand those structural features is kind of difficult to pin down and I'd be the first to say that I don't think we fully got our head around mathematics. I expect when we get our head around mathematics 
from a philosophical point of view, we won't do it via this world of platonic objects. And, and the reason I say that is the reason why less tentatively I'm pretty sure we won't have these non-physical things either, which is that anything that just doesn't interact causally with the world we're in, it's very hard to see how we could get information and knowledge yeah. about but it. But those are two different things. It, one is epistemological sure. in terms of knowing it, the other is ontological, whether there really is it. The fact that sure. we can't know it doesn't mean it, it's sure. not there. Okay. It, it, if it's not there, it's not there, sure. but the fact that we can't prove it doesn't. I, I agree, but in a, only in a minimal sense. I mean, if you like, there's a big catch-all category of things that we'll never have any way of knowing about. And I suppose there might be things in that category. I'll never have a way of knowing. <laughs> um, so, sure, if, if, there are, um, if, if there are things that just don't interact at all with our world, then we, we, we'll just have to guess whether there are such things. But the sort of things that you're describing aren't really in that category. The, the idea of these mathematical objects is that somehow they're relevant explanatory yes, yes. to maths. The idea yes. of consciousness is that somehow it's relevant, explanatory to a physical notion. Yeah. That's what I don't think works. In, in, in the case of consciousness in particular, take that perhaps the most famous example. I mean, I'm saying nothing new here really, but if consciousness doesn't interact with the physical, and we've got pretty good reason to think it doesn't, then when I say to you, I'm conscious, when we have this conversation, when people you know, passionately say that they have this deep intuition that they are conscious and that there's more to their consciousness than mere physical processes. We know, by the way the question's been set up, that the mere physical processes underlie their saying that, and they'd be just as passionate <laughs> if there were none of this extra physical consciousness. So I don't really think it makes sense to have things like that coming in that sure. we but believe in. What you're saying now is controversial, obviously. Oh, massively. Yeah, massively, <laughs> massively controversial. So that means that, that um, a, a category, that set, uh, ha other people think has something in it, you think it doesn't, but it needs to be at least addressed as in, our, in, in my attempt to get everything in, in, under my arms. Well, I, I guess I want to be a bit more sceptical. I think that category is kind of equivocating between a category of things that we genuinely have no access to, right. which I'm agreeing could exist, but we just can't profitably talk about, and a category of things that are supposed to be playing some, some genuine explanatory role even though we can't get mm -hmm. at them. And, I, and I'm saying of that second category, although you're dead right, this is controversial, that I don't think that category is coherent. Mm. So it's not just that I think it's empty, I don't think it really makes sense to talk about it.